Now I've played racers for the past one and a half years and I'll say that I'm a pretty good racer myself. However, in recent updates, uh, I've noticed a strange pattern. A lot of the racers have to end up using the balloon solver as this main tower or rather main source of DPS. So a question I want to ask in today's video is this. Is the balloon solver overpowered? Does it need to be nerfed or am I just panicking for no real reason? Uh, should it be nerfed to the point where the same nerf was dealt to the Glaive Lord and it essentially became a use useless tower? Well, let's find out. So let's start off by looking at some pure statistics from the balloon solver itself. The glue itself deals zero damage, however, it has six piers and it shoots out one every 0.25 seconds aka it shoots out four times every second and not only that every time it shoots out it shoots out two projectiles at once so in theory your pierce is doubled to 12 which if that's not impressive i don't know what is but even though the glue has zero damage the glue status is what's really broken about this tower so let's take a look at that so the glue status means that it deals 1 damage every 0.1 second or rather it deals 10 damage every second and that's actually pretty reasonable if you think about it but that's not the problem the problem is the other things that it deals damage to for example 9 ceramic damage every 0.1 seconds if you don't think that's a lot uh, let me translate that for you that is 90 ceramic damage for every 0.1 seconds and to put into perspective how much that is uh, super ceramics have roughly 56 health and a 45 super ceramics roughly 100 plus so if we were having a, fort, a super ceramic uh, on screen uh, we'll end up getting rid of that ceramic in less than one second and for a fortified super ceramic well it'll take slightly over a second but still it'll, you can deal with it really quickly now that's not it. As you might see on screen, it deals with the BFPs, the fortified BFPs some more, uh, quite quickly. And here's why. It deals 6 damage every 0.1 second. 6 MOAP damage every 0.1 second. So this means it deals 60 damage every second. And yes, that is a lot of damage. Now of course the balloons also move at 50% speed and it lasts for 11 seconds. Now keep in mind, uh, it doesn't affect more class balloons, it just affects normal balloons. But it doesn't really matter considering how fast a super ceramics are getting popped. Even though the glue lasts for 11 seconds on white class balloons, it only lasts for 5.5 seconds, so half that time. In the recent updates, the glue gunner drops glue puddles or other acid puddles after balloons get popped and what does it do the acid puddles have trend deals 20 damage has three pierce and it lasts for whopping 7.7 .7 seconds now you can also take a look at the changes from its previous tier which is the 420 glue or the 400 glue and that is the fact that the glue gets plus four pierce plus an additional projectile uh, it shoots faster and well, it didn't have the ceramic and wipe damage uh, bonuses that it have, and not to mention it doesn't have the acid powder either. So yeah, that is already extremely strong. Keep in mind, this is a 500 glue gunner. It's not even cross path. So what happens when you cross path it with, let's say, the middle path, which is what a lot of people use, especially for races as well. As you can see, the cross path gets the glue plus 5 pierce, and the acid powder gets plus 1 pierce, which you might not think is a lot, but when there's a lot of blooms on screen, especially on racers, that is actually a huge deal because more peers for the regular glue means that it affects more blooms, and more blooms affected means more acid powders are dropped. And the more acid powders are dropped, yeah. Now how about the bottom path glue? Why are many people cross pathing with it? Well, it's because of this. The glue status lasts for 13 more seconds, and the slow strength is from 0 0.5 to 0 0.25 times. And not to mention that acid puddle gets plus 9.1 seconds, which means it can last for a really long time. However, uh, it doesn't deal as much damage because it doesn't add pierce at all. And not to mention the slow strength. Remember, that only applies for normal balloons, not more class balloons. So yeah, 
it doesn't really make that much of a difference. So as you can see so far, we have managed to deal with an infinite wave of uh, BF 45 BFPs uh, so far. So uh, just to prove my point, uh, let's actually get a 500 clue. And as you can see, it's slightly weaker, but uh, still quite fine. And if we were to get stronger glue, it doesn't affect the Moabs. Uh, just to show you guys that it really doesn't make a difference. So let's actually test out the balloon solver with some balloons. So let's give it a spacing of 1. And uh, for starters, let's actually reset the amount of pops. And uh, let's actually send out 100 balloons at once this time. Or rather, let's just send out one balloon. Uh, just so you can see how much damage it does let's actually send out a regular of this balloon now uh the stronger glue does slow it down by a lot actually i'm kind of surprised it doesn't do uh damage when it's under the bridge but so uh, as you guys can see uh it does last longer and it does slow down the balloon but for all practical purposes this doesn't really help so uh, let's actually get back the five Zero glue. So this time let's try sending out a spacing of zero and uh, see how it does against clustered balloons. Like let's try something simple like uh, I don't know red balloons. Uh, how effective is it? It's extremely effective. Okay, how about purples? Because purples are kind of a nuisance to deal with and still manages to deal with it relatively well. Okay, how about rainbows? Rainbows it should be able to deal with it just fine, but yes, it does. Okay, fine. How about cell mix? Keep in mind, this is not even a fortified cell mix. It just excels at it. Now, even if we were to get fortified cell mix, it still deals. It still does pretty well against it. Keep in mind, the glue puddles they are also extremely strong because remember they do twenty damage. Now, this is where things start to get challenging. How about the Moab damage? Is it extremely effective against a group of 999 moabs? And actually, let's look at the damage counter. I mean, look at it, it just increases like rapidly, and not to mention, it just obliterates everything. Okay, fine. Uh, how about BFBs? Let's look at the pop counter, like just go up by a lot. Like, not now, but once it pops to its chill one, yeah, you'll notice it will go up by a lot. I mean, look, look at this. Like, it's lagging quite a lot, but as you can see, it's dealing a massive amount of damages. No other people constantly use the blue sovereign racers. And yeah, I can't really fault them because it really is this strong. Now obviously it won't survive against a tight goal of BFPs, but we did see it work against 45 BFPs. So uh, let's test out some individual rounds right now. So let's give it some camera detection. Uh, we're not going to cross puff it with a top half village because uh, honestly, it doesn't really matter that much. So uh, let's test out round 95. And yeah, it, it deals pretty well against the camo and the uh, purple balloons. That much is already made clear when we test out the uh, cluster of uh, seven balloons. But how about the DDTs? Well, it seems that we're doing quite fine against it. Not to mention, even the underlying mobs, yeah, we're doing okay with. We're doing okay against them, okay? So, uh, how about round 98? Does it make a difference at all? I mean, look at this. It has so much pierce that it's able to affect the zero MGs with just one hit. Let's see, is it able to get rid of all of these balloons? And this is where it starts to show a little... Some minor problems, but still. We should be able to deal with it with no problems. But especially because of the glue puddles. They will help a lot. Uh, I'm not sure about the zero MGs whether they'll survive, but uh, I think we should still be able to pop them on time. Uh, this is getting a bit sketchy, and it is. Uh, we couldn't glue the Semex on time. Uh, I'm not sure if replacing Bloom Solver down here solves the problem, but I don't think it would have, given that uh, it would have been all glued later on rather than earlier. So yeah, if we were to just send a bag, you'll notice that yeah, it's increasing quite quickly, uh, the pop counts, but uh, it's not going to do enough damage to get rid of the bat on time. So yes, the Bloom Solver still has its weaknesses. Uh, it's not able to deal with high health points or more class balloons, especially zero MGs and bats. I actually can't think about it. How well does it does against uh DDTs or other huge group of them? Uh oh, okay, pops into a cell mix. Yeah, okay, that was half expected. Uh, so yeah. Uh, although I would say it's pretty inconsistent overall, so... Okay, so now let's try cross pathing it with the village upgrade. So, uh, I would love to add primary expertise, but I don't want the Mega Ballista to affect things. So, uh, let's see how it changes with more DDTs. Um, let's see roughly the same results, so uh, we shouldn't expect much. So, 
let's actually try something else. What if we change this with round 98 again? Uh, I assume the results will be the same. Okay, so pawns once again are with the zero MG. Actually, we did slightly worse. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, but yeah, we might should somehow do slightly worse. But okay, you might say, uh, the blue gunner is probably dependent on, you know, the map that you're in. So, okay. How about hashtag ouch? Will we be able to deal with more class balloons? Is the short track length just not good enough? So uh, let's leave it at round 1, let's just send our 999 uh, mobs and uh, let's see how well it does. And yeah, it's able to glue all the mobs and holy crap, that's a lot of glue puzzles at once. So yeah, it's able to deal with mobs easily. However, if we were to change this to round 100 and we send out those same mobs again, the higher hit point mobs and the fact that they're moving faster means that they're not too ideal because uh, the balloon solver is not able to uh, catch the cell mix on time for it to glue them. It's also round dependence for how strong the balloon solver is. If however we were to send out I don't know ceramic balloons, like a lot of them, and I mean a lot of ceramic balloons, then yeah, the balloon solver will excel at them. It's only against more class balloons where uh, it will have some slight issues. So yeah, even it doesn't matter whether it's a single path track or multi path track, the point is balloon solver excels at dealing damage across all tracks. And uh, that's really powerful. So yeah, the balloon solver is pretty goddamn strong. However, it's not exactly the best against uh, everything, uh, especially if you're use just using this to deal with extremely high damage mod class balloons. Like, like let's say I send fortified zero MGs, it's not going to do with it. Like. I, I don't even understand, you guys will know that it's not going to be able to do it effectively. So yes, the balloon solver is indeed strong and it's used in races a lot because that is where its strength lies. But outside of races in normal games, uh, you can't just rely on the balloon solver, you have to rely on other towers as well. So yeah, that's the thing that you should take away from this video is that yeah, the balloon solver is strong in theory but it's only strong for one use case and that is for dealing with a lot of balloons at once. So the balloon solver it kind of replaces the glaive lord in the sense that last time or previously the glaive lord used to be extremely overpowered with uh, infinite peers and it deals a lot of damage to both mod class balloons and regular balloons but now they have kept it to I think a thousand peers and uh, yeah, uh, not only that, it also doesn't deal that much damage anymore if I remember correctly. So yeah, everything has its use cases, uh, but especially the balloon solver, it's uh, kind of a different story for that altogether. So yeah, uh, if anything, uh, Ninja Kiwi should probably let the balloon solver stay the same that it is. Uh, I don't think it's worth buffing or nerfing the tower as it is. I think where it stands right now is perfect but uh, maybe allow for less balloon solver in races or maybe find a race solution where it doesn't make use of that many balloon solvers so yeah that's it for this video uh, thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe leave a like if you like this video leave a comment if you have anything else to add and I'll see you guys in the next video